Okay, I think we're live. YouTube just said so. I, as it's doing that, I'm, I'm going to hit the introduction. Let's see if this will still work because I have my little in. Live stream intro, but I also have the YouTube one for us specifically because we needed our own. Oh, <gasps> so cool. I was going, okay, while it's loading, I'll hit the buttons, maybe do some tech stuff while it's going on. But it looks like everything's working for us, YouTube. I'm very happy with this. <laughs> Love it. Oh, my gosh. Thank you. I'm glad you guys liked the intro. I wanted to try and do something new as we were waiting for everything to load and YouTube to connect us. I'm going, okay, I'll do that because every so often someone asks, what's the name of the channel or what's this again? Like, you know, let's do the introduction. So I'm trying to be better about that. So I'm Angela, for those of you who don't know, the one behind the Cozy Mystery Book Club. And I have a very special guest tonight. And so I always wanted to call your jam, but it's Jeannie. Jeannie. <laughs> every time I read her name, like, but it's Jeannie. So now I think of I dream of Jeannie when I see you. I'm like, oh, that goes hand in hand because she's so sweet and so positive. So it works perfectly. I know it's totally spelled differently, but you are a genie. Like you're just a dream come true. So I'm very happy that you're joining tonight. I wrote down your social media info because I wanted to make sure I gave you the proper shout out and people knew where to find you. So she is Jeannie Epps for her last name. E-P-S-T. And then over on Instagram, it's Jeannie Writes. So you can follow her on Twitter and Instagram. So I want to make sure people know that there's coziness in your little corner of the world as well. <laughs> so shout out to my guest hostess tonight. She is so sweet. And it looks like y'all have a lot of opinions about this book because tonight we're discussing Murder in a Scottish Shire, the first book in the series and that we only discussed the first book in the series but it looks like a lot of people have already started reading the rest of the series so there's plenty to chat about yes. <laughs> and there's so many comments <laughs> hello everyone thank you for the warm welcome angela and everyone in the comments it's so fun to be here I'm so happy to have you back. It's been such a long time since I've gotten to chat with you mm -hmm. and so I'm hoping you enjoyed the book did you like okay. it <laughs> I, did. I absolutely liked it. I will tell you, my sister is a big knitter and I have made two total scarves in my life, but I was really, I really enjoyed it. I thought it was a wonderfully cozy, nitty Scottish mystery. I was very happy with this book because I felt like it got a little bit of everything when it came to cozies we had her references to the raspberry scones we had her wanting to go to the tea shop then we had the dog wallace and again i kept thinking of william wallace braveheart scotland every single time i ever saw that name and then we have her small business she's kind of on their main street it was just touching on all these different things and i'm going oh this is such a perfect little mixture of coziness so i was a very happy reader and then you throw the knitting in i mean i know it's on the cover but for some reason, I didn't expect it to be as prominent as it was. And I love that it was so prominent. I now want a knit and sit night. <laughs> I want to have that club. I'm going, we got to make some stickers or something so that I can add that to the, the Etsy or our Instagram page. I mean, I was going to reveal this later, but I was doing a little sticker for hashtag cozy rereads. Now I want a sticker that says knit and sip. <laughs> Like that's going to be a sticker at some point. Got to have, we got to make that happen. Absolutely. I think we could have uh, virtual knit and sips. Why not? Oh yeah. We get, we're going to have the hashtag or something because I love the idea of the way they described it is just their night out. Like that was their safe place. So just diving right on in. We have our sleuther Paisley and right from the get go, she's about to lose her shop. She's going to be evicted. And the way she was talking about her space, I'm we don't find out what happens with the, she, we know she has the eviction notice, but we don't know at the end of the book. So little mini spoiler, she's still in the shop. We're not really sure where she's going yet, but mm -hmm. <laughs> little mini spoiler, but that's not really part of the overarching mystery, but I'm going, please let her stay in this shop. It seems like such a great place to be. This is where they get together. They eat their, <laughs> they have their cheese and their wine. They were, I mean, I love the friend who just was there to enjoy the treats. I mean, I just thought that was so sweet. Like she's going, yeah, she doesn't crochet or knit, but she just wants the company. So it doesn't even have to be about crocheting or knitting. It's just getting together the people you care about and having some crafting fun. So I think I liked the idea of what the knit and sip represented too. Not just the fact that it was a knitting club, but they were open to everybody and all sorts of crafting. So I was a very happy reader with that. 
100%. I, I, like I said, I'm not a terribly great knitter or a, a frequent knitter, but I would 100% go weekly to the knit and sip and either like watch people knit and while I sip or bring my own thing to sip and knit. I like I'm knitting right now. And that's perfect. Because I also think the way she talked about knitting in the book I mean, yes, she's doing this professionally with owning the shop. And I also love that you can see all the all the yarn in the background on the book cover. But I liked it when she said, oh, you know, I like how, keeping my hands busy. I like to listen to the radio or watch, again, Scottish accents and Scottish wording, the telly. <laughs> so I thought that was so cute. She's going, I just let my hands take over and drift into my own little world. And it was just so sweet and inspiring the way she said it. I'm going, yeah, that's a great way of looking at knitting. I mean, yes, you're selling the sweater that you're making. And I actually have thoughts on that sweater, by the way. We're gonna have to talk about this at some point. <laughs> so put a little bit in that one. But the way she's just going, I fell into it and you just enjoy the experience. Like, yes, you're selling this as a product, but you're enjoying it. So it doesn't really feel like work. So I just, I'm going, Tracy Hall kind of hit the nail on the head for me with this. <laughs> I'm like, I really enjoyed this book. <laughs> exactly. I also liked just what knitting sort of represented for Paisley. Mm -hmm. Like it basically gave her life back like it was a gateway to a connection with her grandmother, even after her grandmother had passed, mm -hmm. it gave her a career. It's like, I was thinking of the online sweaters orders that she got yeah. and that she's doing this. And honestly, they're being knit with love. And so the people who are getting those are getting more than just a sweater. And I just really loved that. That's such a great way of looking at it. That's so sweet because it's true. She just, yeah, it, it definitely gave her that connection to her grandmother. And it's so sad because the grandmother has already passed away when the book begins. But you still get that feeling of who she was, what she gave Paisley. She gave her a home. She kind of gave her a purpose. Mm -hmm. And so it was interesting to me how Tracy Hall had a couple different parts here in the book where Paisley says she didn't go to university. She wish she did, but she was pregnant. She had her. I love her son, by the way. I mean, if, <laughs> if I could be guaranteed a kid like that, I mean, we'd be fine. But that kid is so cute. But she has her son. And so she didn't go to university. And she mentions, you know, knitting is my livelihood. But at the same time, I'm enjoying what I'm doing. So I just it was so great to me that the grandmother gave her like her purpose, her fun time. It gave her her friends because they connected over that. So I'm just going, oh, your grandmother took such good care of you. Mm -hmm. She was even though she wasn't alive in the book, she there was a pre her presence was still there. Oh, I yes, I love this comment. The knitting theme was part of the mystery. It's true. It played into the overarching narrative because mm -hmm. we have the victim who worked at the knitting store. Also, uh, oh my gosh, why am I blanking all of a sudden on the name? I have it written down. Cashmere and Crush. Again, the cozy pun for that. Oh, I love that store name. Cashmere and Crush. So we have the victim who worked at her yarn store. Then <laughs> the next door neighbor's dog runs out with yarn <laughs> at the murder scene. So we have a lot of different references to yarn. So yeah, it's one of those. Okay, so... We're, we might not use that specific ball, ball of yarn to knit anything because that was, you know, where we found our <laughs> I love. But I still like that it was kind of all came back around. I do, too. Somebody was saying they learned so much. You said just now, hi, I'm listening. You learned so much about knitting. I didn't realize about all the dyes and stuff. There's so much more that goes into it. Um, I'm really eager, though, to start talking about my very favorite character, Lydia. I mean, who doesn't need a best friend like Lydia? I want one, please. She was so stinking cute. I, lo I love that. Okay, so not really spoiler, but we have a moment where Paisley is in the hospital and Lydia just takes over and helps her. And I'm going, you are the best, best friend I've read about in a long time. She Absolutely. picked up the son from school. She got a rental car for Paisley because her car was in the shop. She picked Paisley up. I mean, she had her back and I'm going, she just dropped everything and just went for it. I'm going, you are so sweet. <laughs> I'm like, can you be my friend? Yeah, yeah, same. And I liked that you could tell that there was so much genuine love between her that she wanted to make her better. So she was sort of subtly pushing her like, you know what, you could strike out on your own and do something, you know, even more if you want. Yet she was also respecting Paisley's 
kind of desire to maybe see how things turned out and, and maybe not push as hard. She really like understood the balance of what a best friend really needs to do. Where'd it go? I just saw this comment, but yeah. So I loved the fact that we have a character who's the best friend and sometimes you have these sort of tropes or reoccurring themes when it comes to books and you're going, oh, I'm not like other girls. Or if a girl's fashionable, she's usually the mean girl. I like that we kind of broke that trope in a way because Lydia is so put together. Again, I, <laughs> I wish I was like that. Her hair, she said, was getting done every six weeks. She always dressed with her professional slacks. And it was so funny when she's like, yeah, that's her comfy wear. And I'm going, that's my dressed up wear. What are you talking about? <laughs> and so she was so put together and I'm going, and she was tall and beautiful. And I liked it when Paisley said, you want to almost be jealous of her, but as soon as you get to know her and she opens her mouth and tells you a joke, you realize how amazing she is and you can't even begrudge her how beautiful and attractive she is. And I'm going, I love that we have a character who is not like the frumpy best friend, because I feel like we see that quite a bit when it comes to just TV and books. I don't know what it is about the frumpy best friend or, oh, if you're the fashion Easter over there and it's not a fashion cozy, she's the bad girl somehow. <laughs> <laughs> True. And I, a, another trope or a thing that we just see, unfortunately, a lot in um, not just books and movies and stuff, but in real life is women not really supporting women. Yeah. Like women competing with each other. And I love that this book showed... I thought I think really authentic friendships and support of fellow women with the knit and sip and with Lydia and even how Paisley treated those people as well and the neighbors yeah. um, uh, next to a cashmere crush. I just really felt uplifted um, by that aspect of the book. I love that too. So this is again why I'm going. Please let her stay in her shop because Paisley is wearing her neck brace the airbag deployed, the seatbelt, it held her down. So she had the sore shoulder, she had the bruise on her face. And I love that every single other shop owner took time to go check on her. And it was almost as if they planned it. We didn't really get into the specifics behind the scenes of this, but I'm interpreting it as they all sort of realized, okay, you go around 10 o'clock, I'll go at 11. They kind of took rotations of, I'm going to bring you treats. I'm going to bring you the tea to take care of you. I'm going to ask if you need anything. They just all kept stopping by and I'm going, this is the type of cozy community you want in a cozy mystery. They were just such great characters. I'm going, please don't like Tracy Hall. You got to protect these. What was it? James, the leather maker. I'm going, he is so precious. <laughs> Take care of him. Please don't make him a victim. Right. <laughs> um, do you mind if I hop on and make us move on to the maybe most delicious it. team? Who is team? Okay. I'm going to forget his name. Team Headmaster McCall mm -hmm. versus team new police guy. What's his <laughs> name? I always forget because they just called him the inspector sometimes or the detective. So I wrote down his name and I love, oh, Mac Zephyr. And I always kept thinking about, Zephyr. for some reason, I'm going, this sounds very much like it's part of the clouds. I'm going, okay, yeah. people are already commenting. <laughs> Here we go. Team Zephyr, team headmaster. Look at that. I love it. Okay. Which team are you? The fact that you brought this up, I feel like you have a very specific opinion. Well, I think it's because I work in education. I'm totally team headmaster. <laughs> so, you, Angela. Okay, so this is this is where I was going earlier when I said I'm going to put a pin in this with a sweater. So, I thought the headmaster was absolutely adorable when he went to her craft fair and it, she wanted to make sure he got the special keychain because it had an extra item on the keychain. It was just a little charm to go with it. So, she made sure he got that one and then he bought the yarn for his sister. But she, he said that he loved the color blue and then she got the sweater order and I'm going, did he place the order for that oh, sweater? Is he having her make him a sweater? And I kept waiting for that reveal. But then at the very end, when he even just showed up at the house to check on her, I'm going, you are the sweetest. Oh, I really liked him by the end. At first I was going, no, this guy is awful because he's calling her out on being late. But she put him in his place and all of a sudden after that I'm, I was just in his corner because as soon as she kind of called him out going look <laughs> the way she dropped the bomb just going yes my grandfather we had the police stop by we had an eviction notice I found a dead body and he's going I should not have called this woman into my office they started off on a bad foot and that slow burn romance is already in play for me I'm, mm -hmm. I'm kind of on his team a little bit 
Yep. Just a little. Yep. Regina has a good point about Brody, though. If that were a thing, Brody, would that would probably be difficult on Brody. We'll have, have to see how it plays out in further books. So I thought that was hysterical. Again, this isn't really spoiler. Yes, it has to do with the ending, but the, the son Brody, apparently he has a few friends who are stealing chips at school and the mother gives him her maternal wise advice. The grandfather, she has to shush him so he doesn't give any bad influence over there. But at the very end, when the headmaster is visiting to check on her and Brody goes, I didn't steal them. It wasn't me. I just lost it. I was laughing so hard. <laughs> it had nothing to do with the mystery or the overarching narrative. Narrative, but I just loved how he knocks on the door and the kids going like, "I wasn't me. Don't put me in detention. I'm sorry." Right. That's so like a ten year old boy thing to say immediately, right? But that's why I think it's so cute. I think there could be a lot of fun to be had with the headmaster and the son, and I'm kind of curious to see what you can do with that because I'm sure there can be some coziness there, some fun, cozy interweaving of how do you do this relationship and oh, you were late again, but we have a date tonight. So yeah, exactly. I will say um, Inspector Zephyr, I warmed up to him right toward the end of the book. Mm -hmm. He was really coming through for Paisley. And I don't know, it's really like, mm -hmm. yeah, I have to, yeah, he grew on me because I, I understand, again, this is one of those, I know what he was getting at, but if I was the person he was questioning, I would be upset too because he wanted her alibi for when the murder occurred and she was so offended and I would totally understand that, but he's just doing his job. So it was definitely a little bit of the butting of the heads there. They weren't really going to see eye to eye right away. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> I just saw this one. Yes, we also have, I want to say his name was Bailey. We have the random dad that she wanted to set up with Lydia. <laughs> That was great. There were so many different relationships on the verge of happening. So again, I think I need to keep reading to find out what actually does happen. <laughs> I think it's cute. But so it looks like people are kind of divided when it comes to... I'm actually going to end the poll that's currently there, which has the star rating for the book. And it looks like most people really enjoyed it, giving the five or four stars, but I'm gonna add the poll because you made me think of it. So I'm gonna add the poll for the love interest. Nice. Cooking with Cozies did give a little spoiler. I don't know if you saw it, Angela, but no, she's reading book number two. I, I'm sorry, I shouldn't assume a she, but Cooking with Cozies reading book number two. And she said that um, the headmaster kind of blows a little bit in book two or at I, least so far maybe he'll rise to the occasion in the end but now of course i'm gonna have to read book number two to see oh, what yeah. <laughs> i'm i'm trying to make sure i'm trying to look up his last name because i just keep calling him the headmaster like what was his last name again i have it here hamish mccall how scottish a name is that i love it i just got a flash of Teen Wolf, Lydia was the Banshee, McCall was Scott. I don't know if you guys got that reference, but that's where my head just went. <laughs> <laughs> it's so funny with this book because I knew who the characters were sometimes, but I didn't know their names. I'm like, okay, you're the detective, but I forget what I'm actually supposed to call you aside from the detective. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Oh, it just keeps getting better. So I made a note of this because I wanted to make sure I mentioned that Tracy Hall is a very sweet person. She's done 12 Days of Cozies, I want to say three years in a row. I, I just really enjoy her. I think she's so sweet. But she's also part of a writing duo, Tracy Wilton. So Tracy Hall and then Patrice Wilton write together doing their own books as well. So I don't want you to miss out on coziness if you enjoy Tracy Hall's writing. So Tracy Hall is also part of Tracy Wilton. So make a little note of that in case you want to keep reading her books. I wanted to, because I know when it comes to, my, I know there's some authors, I'll all of a sudden realize they have a secondary pen name or there's some, or they'll do their initials for something instead of going by the name that I'm used to them as. And then you're going, I missed out on all of this amazing writing. 
and it just because I didn't know. So I didn't want people to miss out on the awesomeness if this is someone you want to keep reading. So I'm going to type it in the comments, make sure y'all know exactly how I said it. I know I am from Massachusetts. I don't want the Bostonian accent to take anything. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for mentioning that because so many of these cozy authors have multiple pen names. Mm -hmm. And when you find one, like you said, like this, you want to find the rest of their book. So this is perfect. Thank you. Oh, no, I just wanted to make sure I highlighted that. I mean, I wrote this in huge lettering <laughs> on the back of a piece of paper. I wanted to make sure I highlighted that mm -hmm. because every so often um, I feel like I missed out on just great writing or a great series or I came to it later than I should have if I had just known. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But anywho, we haven't really talked about the victim yet because this was a very interesting mystery. Oh, my gosh, the kitty cuteness right there. <laughs> My cat. She's never apologized when there's an animal of any kind involved. And that she's beautiful. That's Scarlet. Oh my gosh. Beautiful little face. <laughs> I love black cats. <laughs> I mean, we had a black little terrier in the book. So it's like the color. Right. The there you go. But yeah, Isla <laughs> Paisley was the only one who was upset with her being dead. Even Paisley's own mother wasn't that upset. So we have to talk about Isla. What do you guys think of this mystery? She was blackmailing some people. She was having an affair. Was she actually using Paisley or was that who she really was? Was she her best self around her? What did you really think of her? Yeah, I'm curious too. Um, I have to tell you, I was really surprised when the first character said to Paisley, hey, you know, she's she's not that great of a human, you know, maybe she's probably using you. I didn't see that coming. And so I thought it was really interesting how that developed and how it made Paisley sort of look inward and maybe think, oh, maybe I'm I'm looking at this totally the wrong way. It was a surprise to me. It was really interesting because I liked Lydia and I think she was the first person who said she's a user and I'm going, hmm, this is the first time anyone actually spoke negatively about another character. <laughs> oh. I think again, I'm going like going with the theme of female friendship, female support. All the other characters seem to interact really well, but for some reason when it came to Isla there, all of a sudden people started tense up going, uh, not so much mm -hmm. because that sort of got the ball rolling of you could, again, Lydia was not being blackmailed. This was just a matter of her not liking Isla's attitude or the way she would sometimes change her work schedule with her friend. I thought it was sweet that she was so protective of Paisley. But then you have Isla's boyfriend who she cheated on. And then you have the fact that she cheated with a married man. And then she's blackmailing people. So the more we found out about her, the less I liked her. And again, I know it's murder, but like the less I felt bad about it in a way. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, once we met Isla's mom toward the end of the book, mm -hmm. part of me was like, oh, you know, hurt people, hurt people, that whole adage. Um, but I, I don't know that I can think of another cozy mystery that has that had that sort of reveal where you didn't anticipate um, beforehand that the character who gets murdered is kind of the bad guy or the meanie or, you know, the user. Um, and so I thought this, um, the author really did an interesting job of how she chose to reveal it in this book. It was, yeah, I'm going, I'm just nodding right along because I think that shows really good writing. The fact that your character development is occurring, even though your character is dead and off the page, you're still showing these different facets of her personality and the history of what she'd gone through and done. So that to me is just really fascinating because your opinions changing of a character you don't actually see interacting with anyone just kind of what other people have experienced around her or relating to her so again I'm going like that is like a little plus to you <laughs> <laughs> yeah exactly oh yes so the mother okay Isla's mother thoughts what was going on there this woman goes to the house and she wants to know why there's no jewelry she accuses the cops of stealing jewelry then she wants to meet paisley but then she insults paisley oh i mean at this point do you blame isla for being the way she is i mean i don't want to go to that family reunion please <laughs> um it's just it's a sad thing but i somebody in here i'm sorry i don't remember oh cooking with cozy said you know you can only blame so much on the upbringing because adult when we get to be adults people make their own choices 
but certainly Isla didn't have the best start and that didn't provide any kind of um, structure for the life that she could have led. So I also thought, I was kind of wondering what was going on with Tabitha as well, because when we first meet her, she's at the flower shop. She's working as a florist and she's all upset about her old roommate slash BFF's death. And then we find out more about her and I'm going, oh my gosh, what is going on? You people seem so sweet upon first glance. And then there's this hidden dark side to you. <laughs> there were a lot of characters that weren't exactly who we thought they were. So exactly. that was interesting to me. And it wasn't so much a red herring of, oh, I'm going to throw you guys down this road. It was one of those, the way the details kind of grew and grew and grew. I just, again, bowing down to the writing ability there. Exactly. Yeah. And, and I think that to some extent that, that for me was toward the end when we, when it was revealed who did do it, um, the circumstance with that particular character, no spoilers, um, <laughs> uh, it made me sort of like feel for the character, you know? Um, but I, cause I do love a good revenge story and part of me wanted to, um, explain it away in that way, but Really, it was a, a bit more than you could really explain away with just that. Uh, but yeah, because people, I'm pretty sure online there was a little bit of a divide because most people didn't seem to guess who the murderer was. And so we actually had two murders occur because Isla was the first victim and then her ex-boyfriend who thought he just had ate a bad clam or bad haddock or something. He thought he had food poisoning, turns out. He was poisoned. It was a poisoning, but just different type of poisoning that he thought. And so we have a second body drop. And then we find out that about some somebody else who's being poisoned. So there were a lot of different things going on when it comes to when they arrest this character. <laughs> Those handcuffs, they're going to be reading her rights for a while. Yes, very, very true. And and I didn't, um, I, I didn't see it coming. I just didn't. So I'm going to ask for the comments. Who solved it? Who knew? Who didn't know? Because I very much kind of just had my suspicions, but I wasn't going, oh, it's so you. It is totally this. And then I wasn't caught off guard with the reveal, but I also wasn't, yes, I'm val you know, <laughs> I'm like, I'm validated. I mean, I understood as soon as the reveal happened, but I basically just thought it was going to be someone in the knitting group because it, again, pertained to yarn. So I kind of thought about that in a way. But yeah, I didn't get the exact character. Same. I knew that that character and what they did for a living probably was going to play into it because there was so it was so ripe for that. But I didn't I didn't guess it until we got to that point. So this was one of those moments where I remembered the characters, but I didn't necessarily remember their exact name. And again, this is one of those I felt so badly about that, but I kept going, you're the one crocheting and knitting the blanket for your <laughs> for the christening and I basically had this moment of it cannot be her because she is too adorable wanting her pink yarn to do this good deed and now she's knitting booties I'm going please don't let her be the killer and so I eliminated her from my suspect list but again I just thought she was very sweet so I'm going please don't let it be her that wasn't so much that I was convinced it wasn't just emotionally speaking <laughs> I didn't want it to be her but then that was kind of going okay who's left in the knitting group and maybe we should have been more aware of this particular character because they talked about the herbs and the poisons and how you're setting the colors with poisons. So we had the two and two, but I didn't make it equal four until the very end. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm glad that I'm not the only one who doesn't claim to be a mathematician. Two and two is four. Um, <laughs> um, but the thing that that kept me like coming back and like, swelling my heart with love for this book was like the sense of found family for Paisley. Granted, she had her grandma who has already passed when the book begins, but she literally has found family in the very first scene where her grandpa is found on a park bench and um, is grumpy and cranky in adorable ways. And she doesn't think it's going to become much, but by the end of the book, she's really found someone in her life. 
that was I love how we hadn't talked about the grandfather yet. I'm going, we really do need to have a full on discussion about him, because at first I was kind of hesitant going, OK, you're, you haven't been around. We know you had an affair. But even though those things sort of happened, he was still a great guy. And I loved that he was so helpful to her and he wanted to be helpful when she ever woke up and he'd already cleaned and already done household chores. I'm going, oh, that was so nice of you to help out <laughs> Paisley when she's so busy and she's so stressed out. That was when I'm going, okay, you kind of just won me over wholeheartedly. Yes, you have a past, but I forgive you <laughs> moving forward. When he ever took Brody and her to go fishing, oh, my heart. I know. And you could tell even just by the way he spoke of her grandma that he had he's still so full of love for her and he recognizes the mistake that he made and what he lost because of it. But um, I thought that the author had such a deft hand with his character because he was just perfect crotchety enough to be interesting, um, but, you know, full of enough heart to be endearing. Yeah, I, I'm looking at some of the comments. People seem to really enjoy him. And I love the way you say that because he was a little cranky, but in a cute, fun way, instead of a, oh my gosh, I wouldn't want to talk to you on the street, sort of, I'm going to run in the opposite direction. He yeah. was still likable. And that is a very difficult, fine line <laughs> to balance. And yet she did it. So I'm like, brava, Tracy Hall. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. No, he was so cute. I There were a couple other moments. I'm trying to remember. I liked when he drove her to... <laughs> I like that she was going to add him to the list for pickups so that he was going to be more apart and you knew he was going to be staying around longer. Mm -hmm. But I liked that he was genuinely trying to find out what had happened to Craig. Again, I'm just, I'm, that is how the pronunciation in my head is, Craig. Um, <laughs> so I liked that he wasn't just waiting for the cops to get back to me. He was actively trying to find out this mystery, which we do not have an answer to at the end of this book, he was not just going to sit around and hope for the best. Like he cared about his son. He wanted to know what was going on. And he was still saying, oh, I'll live with Craig. I want to be with Craig. It was one, it just, I'm trying to think how to say this. He was not giving up on his son and he wasn't just trying to move on from him. I like that he cared and was not going to just, you know, take it lying down. Like, yes, I'll go live in the park. <laughs> For a week or two but I still need to find my son like he had his priority <laughs> yeah he the way that the author wrote him it was evident that everything from looking for Craig to being you know doing things for Paisley it was because he was caring for those people he didn't want to just find Craig because he needed a place to stay he is caring about this person in his life and he wants to make sure that Craig is okay um, and I think that um, the way, again, the way that she wrote him was just enough without being over the top, you know, and, and I just, I want that grandpa. It was so cute when she was thinking, oh, what am I going to cook for dinner? And all of a sudden she comes home and the kitchen smells, you know, she's going, this has, it has this delectable smell. I'm excited to eat now. So he was just really great with helping out. And he wasn't, he didn't need to be asked it wasn't so much out of obligation. Like he wanted to help out because he cared about the, he cared about his family. And it was funny to me how <laughs> um, Brody, the son, again, their first introduction was a little, little rough. It was a little tumultuous at first. Uh, he, <laughs> the crotchety old man, when he says, Oh, you're my grandfather. And then he corrects him. I'm your great grandfather. And he has a tone and the son backs off, but then they're fishing and they're, and they're, deboning the fish and doing all sorts of other things together so they learned and they grew they it was just again i like things like that and we didn't need to see this evolve over the course of a series we got to see this over the course of one book which i appreciated we didn't have to wait forever to see those two bond which i appreciate like i appreciated that as a reader i'm so sometimes i'm going oh please stop dragging this out but i liked that we had that sort of progression happen pretty quickly totally agree and one of my favorite, like, unsung hero characters we we haven't really mentioned was Amelia, who worked at the police station. Um, it's an, and I loved also the way that the other women lifted her up and was encouraging her to take, like, the police license test or detective test or whatever it was. Um, and the way that Tracy Hall described her feelings based on um, that support from those women was just 
just gave me the, all the feels that I needed that day. I just, I love that. I love that part too. There was something so sweet about her saying, I'll help you study. And then when they're at their little, their little knitting group, their knit and sip, their event. And she was kind of dancing around, not really feeling confident going, yeah, you know, I, I might want to be a constable. And then the other women, instead of feeding into her doubt, they wanted to just lift her up and tell her to go for it. And they're telling her, you're intelligent, you can do this. And the other women were saying, I didn't go to university either, but I was able to accomplish this. Or you don't need to have gone to university to do what you want, what you want to do over there. And I just appreciated that. Exactly. <laughs> Yeah, I think that there's sometimes the natural inclination to want to protect people or shelter them in a way. And so I appreciated the fact it wasn't a, oh, you don't have to, you're doing great as is. If instead of just accepting where you were, they wanted to make her better and improve her life and make her dreams come true. Mm -hmm. So I'm getting emotional talking about that. Oh, I love, I love that. <laughs> um, also, I feel like if she does become a constable or detective, or forgive me for not remembering what the title it would be, um, she would, it could be great for later books in the series. Like she could be, uh, maybe bring up that character and be a bit, slightly bigger character, maybe be a foil or all kinds of cool stuff. I like the, I just noticed the comment about the pocket knife between Brody. <laughs> uh, yeah, Brody wanted a pocket knife and grandpa was going, yeah, just give him a knife. I mean, I picture him as like, yeah, just rub some dirt on it. Like, it's fine. You know, one of those old time, he sort of, eh, it's okay. You got a little nick over there. But yeah, he, he had to kind of mind his P's and Q's a little bit of, yeah, no, it's okay. You don't really, don't let your friends steal the chips. Don't just brush it off. Yeah, that's something minor compared to you dealing with the murder mystery, but yeah, it's still wrong. You kind of had to put him in his place a little bit sometimes. <laughs> exactly. And I love that Paisley and grandpa chimed in and talked about, you know, made that kind of more of a life lesson without banging him over the head with this big lesson. It just gave him an opportunity to think about it. And I think Brody ultimately decided exactly how he was going to handle it. Except when the headmaster appeared and he got <laughs> rattled because right, right. he didn't steal the chips. <laughs> <sighs> See, I love that this book, again, this is the whole episodic versus overarching narrative. So we have the clean cut narrative for the first book in the series. We have our murder mystery with Isla and then Billy kind of around the 60% mark when his body drops. But we also have the lingering questions of who does she end up with? What's going to happen with grandpa? What about Craig, grandpa's son? And same thing with all these other little moments of is Amelia going to go and grow in her job? What's going to happen if she gets a different job in the department? I, I appreciate that it's not just one ongoing mystery there's some there's some books that i've read where it's just one thing of oh is she gonna find her long lost mother and that's the only real mystery for the rest of the series but this one gave you a lot of different kind of breadcrumbs to potentially follow which i i like because again if you don't like one mystery you're gonna enjoy amelia's story if you don't like grandpa's story you can be over here following this little relationship narrative <laughs> so again that works for me as a reader it gives you options 100 percent plus I mean, that's more like real life, right? Everybody in your life has their own story. And so it's neat that the author kind of put in some, all these, like you said, breadcrumbs for these other characters that we'll probably eventually learn more about in the other books. God damn, now I'm going to have to read the other books. <laughs> I think I have a few of them here. Kensington sent me some of the ARC copies and I organize things based on date instead of by series. So I might have to go looking for a couple of the other ones. But I love that the dog is always on the cover. We, we didn't really see that much of Wallace in the book. Aside from him sleeping next to Brody and going out of the backyard and he was there at the craft fair, I'm pretty sure he was in attendance. He was. Um, I like that they brought him to the craft fair. That was so cute. I like that they didn't just leave him at home. They included him when they went fishing so i want more i want more wallace in future books too i know he's on the book cover so i'm hoping maybe maybe he'll find his own little love story or maybe he'll find some yarn that's gonna become his favorite you know I, I, he's wearing a little bow so i'm kind of like going is she gonna knit him a little sweater little booties is he gonna end up wearing something so i want more wallace in the story oh i love it 
I yes, he looks so cute on the book covers. I swear Kensington has some of the best book covers because even looking at this, it's so colorful because you have all the different yarns grouped by color in the background. Then you get the cute little dog on the cover. Oh, just perfect. And even just the I don't want to mispronounce because I'm I don't know if this is a wall tapestry or draping, but you kind of got a little bit of a Scottish vibe with the plaid going. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so you even yeah. have a little bit of Shire vibes going. So I'm giving Kensington their proper dues with those book cover creations. They're mm -hmm. just gorgeous to me. Yeah, they do a great job with that. And it just hits home the perfectly quaint village atmosphere of the book, which I want to dive right back into. I want to live there. I had to look this up because I wanted to make sure this is a real town. <laughs> I, I don't want to pronounce Narn is a real town in Scotland. So I'm going, okay, I kind of want to go visit this town now. And so it's in the Highland Council area of Scotland. And it is an ancient fishing port and market town, 17 miles east of the, it's just, I, again, I'm just like, trying to read this because the printer smeared. I'm like, does it say Averns or is this an R or an M? Um, so it's 70 miles east of the word that I cannot actually make out because of the printer. Um, <laughs> so it is a real town because I wasn't entirely sure if this was fictional just for the book itself. And so I was really excited when I found out that it was real. I now want to add that to my bucket list of places to visit. <laughs> yes, let's have a cozy mystery book trip. Thank you. Yes. The, thank you. For some reason, of course, the printer, you know, when you get the black line that goes through things you're, and you need to change the ink cartridge, mm -hmm. that would happen to me. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, I have the best luck in the world. It's one of those, if it's going to happen one out of 20 times, it's going to happen to me on that 20th. <laughs> it's the way of my life. <laughs> yeah, you will move on. Anywho, yes. I almost feel as if we got to do our little book club tour of, um, there are different places and different cozy mysteries that come up. There was, oh my gosh, why am I blanking? It's not, it's, it's in Oklahoma. I think it's the city of Tort um, <laughs> for Ellie Alexander series. There was another city mentioned there or another town, excuse me. I'm going, oh, this is a real place, not Tort, but there was another real place. And so I'm looking at all these different books and I'm going, oh, this is a real one. I now have to look up to make sure a town is real or not instead of just a creative imaginary, like the imagination of the writer, because I can never tell anymore <laughs> if it's real or not until I look it up. <laughs> <laughs> I love those Ellie Alexander books because I grew up in Oregon and I know exactly that town, Ashland. And ah, thank you. It is to the T along with, and whenever you go visit Ashland, you have to drink the disgusting water but you have to do it because you're there and that's what you do yes thank you you guys are so on your game when i have my little i would i mean i almost called it a brain freeze I'm like the brain fart where you're like okay i have it on the tip of my tongue but i can't quite remember you knew ashland you're remembering um let it the let it be one where it's by nancy coco you guys got my back i appreciate that <laughs> I am you guys make it so easy like because there's so many different notes and different cozies flying around it's sometimes hard to keep track of all of them <laughs> <laughs> hey everyone if you didn't catch it when Jess loves cozies wins the lottery we're all going on a trip <laughs> Thank you, Jess. that's so cute that would be so, that would be really fun to do an actual in-person um pertaining to the cozy mystery book club i'm going to be at malice domestic next month so at the end of april i'm going to be at malice domestic which is technically right near dc maryland border area so i'm trying to figure out if there's a way where i could do oh okay i'm gonna be down there at you know noon for coffee and I, i'm gonna i actually put together some little swag bags for people that I meet in person. So there's going to be a little extra special something in there that I'm not going to put on the swag table itself. So I was going to put together little bags for book club members I meet in person. So I'm trying to figure out if there are things to do when there are events, if I can just put it out there, you know, I don't know how to explain. I want to try and plan something and be going, okay, I'm going to be here. <laughs> what is the one? Um, butcher con. I'm going, okay, on Monday at this time, I'm going to be ready to hopefully say you guys in person. So <laughs> That's fantastic. If I were anywhere near there, I would be right there. <laughs> I just want to try and do something so that there are these events and there are things on the actual official schedule. So maybe an unofficial book club get together, say hi in person. I would love to be able to do that. So that's on the list of things. So 
still working on. <laughs> awesome. But yeah, no, so totally getting off track there. <laughs> but <laughs> you guys are so easy to chat with and talk to. That's why I'm like, oh yeah, bug, casual crush. But was there anything else? Because I know I posted the question over on Instagram, but if there was something else pertaining to the book, the characters, a line of dialogue, something you wanted to talk about tonight, please comment and let us know. I just want to make sure that we did talk about everything that you guys posted on Instagram. You guys are also so cute. I love the one about, I already ordered the next book. <laughs> I'm already reading book two in the series. And then I think we touched on the well-written characters. But even the unique setting, I love that you guys... I think we're all on the same the same sort of page when it comes to this book. 100%. I keep wondering what's actually going to happen to Cashmere Crush. I love that um, uh, Lydia, yes, um, was constantly saying, I still haven't seen your building come up. I still haven't seen it. And I am really hopeful that it never does. And she doesn't actually have to leave. But this is why I'm getting book two as soon as we are done with this. I liked the one where it said, <laughs> I'm hooked, pun intended. <laughs> nice. Love um, ones. So I will just say, I did see one comment where it pertained to the book itself. And so this is where I think reading as an American versus reading as a native uh, living in Scotland and knowing the Scottish culture inside and out, growing up there is different because... There were a couple of things apparently native <laughs> natives of Scotland got that I didn't or they picked up on. So there was the difference between her bangs and her fringe. For me, that went right over my head. But somebody else was going, if you're living in Scotland, you're calling it a fringe, not not bangs. Mm -hmm. So for me, it didn't take away from the reading. But some people know the just the Scottish culture so well, little, little details like that stood out to them but for me it, I didn't notice it until someone actually pointed it out and I'm going oh yeah but I thought it was really well researched yes it's a real town but I felt like I was actually there I liked the way the Scottish dialogue flowed maybe again I, I know someone mentioned they were an Outlander fan and this definitely gave them the perfect setup for this <laughs> and I agree wholeheartedly I think listening to Jamie's very thick Scottish rogue accent <laughs> probably helped a lot <laughs> but I do I I think she kind of hit the nail on the head when it came to getting the Scottish Shire vibe. So I was kind of curious about that. I, I am with you. I didn't, I'm, I'm kind of a British fanatic and granted this is Scotland, not Britain, but UK, UK. Um, I did, I totally forgot the fringe thing. So I, 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 agree with you. I think she put in just enough to make it feel authentic, but it didn't take me out of it in any way. No, I didn't think of that at all until I was on Goodreads preparing my notes, going over things. And it wasn't until it was pointed out where I'm going, oh, but in the moment, it just went right along. And maybe mm. I was so engrossed in it with the characters, the narrative. It was one of those details where it was just superfluous. But mm. and I'm usually very detail oriented. So for me, I was going, even if there was a little minor error like that, I still think she kind of got the Scottish culture, at least as far as I could tell. For me, she was good. Thumbs up. <laughs> you want your you want your husband to buy a kilt. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> that was so nice. cute. I will say, for some reason, again, Agatha Raisin. She was originally the actress um, Ashley Jensen. There, she was from Scotland, and so she'll say murder, and the way she says murder, like they they'll kind of repeat the other characters will try and say murder like she does I was kind of picturing that <laughs> I was having her little voice in my head sometimes nice. murder. I can't do it like she does but she has a great accent so there was a little bit of an Agatha Raisin moment for me or you know I wanted that gif or gif however you want to pronounce it I wanted her saying murder that I could use for our Twitter account or Instagram or something because <laughs> nice. you got the Scottish accent I think it needs to be used <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. nice I won't even attempt an accent because I'm way worse than you are. <laughs> I'm going, ah, I'm just going to try and do it like she does. I can't. But the way she says it is so brilliant. <laughs> but no, you guys, I'm trying to think. Was there anything else in your notes that you wanted to touch on or mention? I basically wrote down all the characters. Um, I really enjoyed Elspeth and her sister. 
And oh, I'm hoping yeah. they come back around. Um, when she was talking about caring for her sister who has gone blind, um, I thought it was neat that, that the author actually brought those characters into the next scene or whatever scene um, when they were going to the carnival or the whatever day. Um, and the sister seems great. So I hope that those characters come back. I'd love to, to see them some more in the further books. That I have to admit, I thought it was really sweet how the sister who did go blind was kind of having a moment with Wallace. So again, he wasn't in the book like too, too much, but when he was there, it made such a difference. And I almost felt as if he was her emotional support animal in that moment mm -hmm. where he was giving her the comfort she needed. Mm -hmm. Even though, again, he's just there on her lap. That was exactly what that character wanted and needed in that moment. She's going, oh, he's such a good boy. <laughs> For some reason that really touched my heart. I'm going, oh, that's so sweet. But one of the one of my favorite scenes, and again, it had nothing to do with the mystery, but I absolutely adored her son. So after Paisley was in the car accident, she fell asleep on the couch, and then she wakes up to find her son slept right next to her on the floor with Wallace the dog right next to him, just in case she needed him throughout the night. He wanted to protect her and make sure like she was safe and cared for. And then he was wearing the socks that she crocheted. Oh my, I just melted. <laughs> Oh, you're the best son ever. Oh. Yeah, that was so so sweet, and I think probably genuine to what that that kid, if he were a real kid, would have done. Absolutely. Oh yeah, when she ever came home and he ran up to her and he wanted to check on her, when he wanted to make sure things were done so that she didn't have to do them. Mm -hmm. I love the son. I thought he was so cute and so sweet. But I love that he slept on the floor. It's like he wanted to take care of his mom. They were yeah. a team. Exactly. And that speaks to, I think, why I enjoyed this one maybe more than certain other cozies is that I felt like each character, no matter how long they were in the book, were, were genuinely well-rounded. Like you could tell that each character has layers, even though um, some of the, say, knit and sip ladies were complaining about certain things that only added to their dimension for me. And I really appreciated that. Yeah, I have to say too, like, even though I think Brady is apps, oh, Brady, uh, Brody, <laughs> maybe because Tom Brady is always in the news and I'm from New England. Um, Brody, when, I, when he said he didn't want to tell his mother about his homework assignment because he wanted to enjoy his Sunday with her. I'm going, that is so cute and so sweet. And I love that you love your mom, but you got to do your homework. <laughs> exactly. I'm, I, Come on, buddy. I mean, he wasn't perfect. I mean, he's still forgetting to tell her about the homework. He packed extra crisps in his lunch because he thought the mother wasn't going to notice. So he was trying to do his little kid things. And when he ever <laughs> was saying he wanted to do the dragon kite, which was so much more complicated. I mean, he was sweet and thoughtful, but he was still a kid. So I think that kind of had a nice balance to it where he's the perfect son, but he's also perfectly imperfect. Exactly. He was age appropriate all of his like behaviors really felt age appropriate for a 10 year old boy oh yeah i definitely also got um i remember the show the middle i don't know if anybody else knows this show it was on for i want to say nine seasons i i still rot i still put on the rewind the reruns on hbo max i think the show is hysterical the son on the show brick he was always forgetting to do his homework so all of a sudden i kind of got a flash of brick and how he used to always drive his mother crazy telling her the night before something was due oh you needed to go to the store to buy sugar cubes for me to do this or i needed this folder for that so i thought it was cute because again he was still acting like a kid and i thought of this show and how it was something realistic so i i'm team brody I know he's just a kid, but I'm rooting for him. Whatever he wants, I want him to get. <laughs> exactly, exactly. And I sort of look forward to how Brody evolves as he gets a little bit older, I imagine, in the further books. Like that will add, you know, the opportunity to add more, add more dimension to his character too. So that'll be fun to read about. Oh, I think she mentioned about girls or he's still at the age where he thinks girls has cooties. So maybe he has his first dance or his first date and we get to see her go through the mom thing. Also, I, I thought it was so funny that the friend Lydia there wanted her to not be wearing the mom jeans. She wanted her to dress <laughs> dress up and totally. put herself out there. So I yep. think there's a lot of things to come with that. Totally. Yes, 100%.
<laughs> oh, you guys are so cute. The comments are popping up. I think there was a little slight delay with me seeing them. I thought that was so funny with the kite because that's some that's totally something a kid would do. They leave the <laughs> They leave the assignment in their backpack because they want to watch TV and not let the mom know there's an assignment due or something. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, no. So I was just looking down. Was there anything else you guys wanted to touch on? I wasn't sure if I missed some of the comments because there's so many of them. But I will mention with the comments. So there are two giveaways and I have some news pertaining to maybe a third giveaway. Ooh. So <laughs> I'm going to have my notes written down. So Poison Pen Press, one lucky sleuther who came and commented tonight is going to win two Cozy Mystery paperbacks, Death Comes to Marlowe by Robert Thoroughgood and Death and Croissants, which I think is the great title for a book. I mean, this book made me want scones. And so anyway, Death and Croissants by Ian Moore. And then a second giveaway, another sleuther is going to win Vanessa Westerman's cover art, which seems like a really interesting cozy mystery. The idea of art being behind or involved with the mystery kind of seems to go hand in hand with our next month's book, which again, if you notice, I don't know if you can tell, but there are two books here. <laughs> but in actuality, I have five books so because we're celebrating five years of live streams five five trying to be fun and so there's going to be a giveaway on the cozy mystery instagram so instagram giveaway book we're going to have a twitter giveaway book and maybe someone from the comments is going to be winning a book tonight so multiple copies of next month's book up for grabs let's see if i can actually hold them all at the same time <laughs> <laughs> maybe I can maybe I can't I think there's actually one more over here yes so five mm -hmm. books five giveaways to celebrate the cozy mystery book club and you guys being a part and awesome and to thank you and to hopefully just let you know how much I appreciate you <laughs> Yay. so five different giveaways are happening and me being me it's not just going to be the book I showed you this earlier, but yes. So I have some new stickers to share that I will slip in with the book for the giveaway. So lots of coziness is happening tonight and coming up. So lots, lots of coziness up for grabs. And I will just preface one winner each. So <laughs> one person cannot win two. So hopefully across platforms as well, because I know not everyone can join an event live, but they might be able to comment after the fact. So I'm going to try and figure out a way so that YouTube is a possible giveaway tonight. I might do one. Um, what's it called? Rocket something. The survey is kind of the I'm going to try and figure out ways so that no matter the platform or no matter what social media you utilize, you can enter to win. So that's what I that's why there are multiple giveaways, multiple books, because I appreciate you guys and I want you to be able to enter and win and win. I don't want anyone to say I wasn't able to win. I wasn't able to do this. So I'm trying to get, I, I've got you covered. So I think I'm going to do something with the multiple entries so that if you're a newsletter subscriber, you, you can get like those five entries in the giveaway. If you tweet something, you can get an extra giveaway. So there are lots of going to be lots of different ways to win. So this is, this is happening. <laughs> Angela, I just have to say, I think probably on behalf of everybody here, Thank you. I think this group is as fantastic and has grown so much as it has because of you and because of your generosity and your kindness, not only with actual things that you, like these cool, cool giveaways, but with your time and all of the incredible artwork and the things that you put together on a, a monthly basis with the newsletters, but then all the time on the social media feeds mm -hmm. you are what keep keeps cozy mystery reads going for me and why i keep coming back okay i love the books too but i love you and i think mm -hmm. we all feel the same way so thank you so so much i'm trying not to cry that is the sweetest thing oh thank you <laughs> oh my gosh i'm getting me all getting me all emotional thank you for saying that i really do try because i want to make sure that I do a good job. And because people do follow the account, I want to make sure that I do it justice. And you hit that follow button. I want to make sure that you feel feel the appreciation, know how much I want to offer you the coziness and include you in the coziness. So to hear that, it, it means a lot. So <laughs> I'm going to keep trying to do my best. I've been working on a lot of stuff behind the scenes. Some things I haven't 
even there's so many things I haven't even touched on because I very much only do the reveals once something's done. I I'm, might try and do a little bit more of the behind the scenes process. There are some accounts. I know Elise Brienne Design, she'll show you as she's designing. And instead, I'm just going, here's the sticker that I created. So I'll try and show you guys a little bit more of what's going on behind the scenes. But I have been working on something that's been taking up a lot of time. But I think it's going to come out really, really cute when I'm officially done. But I, I'm always trying to do stuff. I think about this book club so much every day. I am always, always have the Cozy Mystery Book Club on my mind. I want to make sure that I am posting something to give an author a shout out, give you guys something to look forward to. So to hear you say how much you enjoy and appreciate it just means so much to me. So thank you for saying that. Oh my word. It's, I, I could keep going. But um, so many of the these wonderful comments are saying the same thing. Angela, you are incredible oh. and uh, look here's to five more years at least <laughs> thank you i so going along with the i so i was not in the most stable emotional place i originally was going to make march this big mystery month but i lost my fur baby so i'm not really going to talk about that right now but um i put i had to put a pin in some of the plans and so what i'm going to do is i'm going to turn my March plans into the April plans. And so there's going to be a podcast episode dropping every Tuesday. <laughs> so chatting mm -hmm. cozies is officially going to be updated because I haven't been posting on that podcast, but there's going to be podcasts coming your way to give you all sorts of coziness. Plus I wanted to do something special to celebrate. I originally wanted to do a giant cake that said, thank you, <laughs> and have a little magnifying glass on it. I wanted to have balloons. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to probably do a special live stream or do something on Instagram live to say thank you and celebrate. And of course, have a giveaway or something because I wanted to do something to celebrate the anniversary of our five years of doing live streams because the book club technically was founded in 2017, but we've been going live every single month except for December because holidays and 12 days of cozies, but every, so 11 out of 12 months for five years isn't bad odds. So <laughs> I wanted to do something to celebrate that. So I'm still going to figure, I'm still working on that. So if you have any requests or thoughts, let me know, but I do want to do something live to say thank you and have sort of a little mini cozy party and celebrate. But yes, there are going to be new podcast episodes every Tuesday. I'm going to have some cozy mystery related blog posts going up. So lots of cozy mystery fun to celebrate the anniversary because there is no book club without you guys. So you guys deserve the shout out and the loves. That's why I wanted to make sure like I have the stickers made up and ready to go because you guys deserve it. I have the Agatha giveaway like ready to go. This is going to happen on Instagram and Twitter. So again, Agatha is going to be going with the little She's going to be going in the book. <laughs> so when you guys win, there are going to be some stickers tucked in there. So giveaways are going to be happening because there is no book club without the book club members. Like you guys make this the club. You guys choose the books. You vote on the books. I'm here because of you guys. <laughs> yes, I can talk about Cozy Mysteries by myself to myself, but that's not why. No, this is to celebrate Cozy Mysteries with you guys and to just... To, to like, oh, I'm getting emotional. So shining the sleuthing spotlight on these amazing books that are overlooked a lot. And I'm so honored that this was the first Cozy Mystery Book Club. And again, you guys are still here five years later, which is amazing. <laughs> and I'm so grateful for. So I wanted to do something special to celebrate the book club and you and give you the, the content that you've been asking for. And some people are going, is this really the last episode for the podcast? I'm going, I'm working on it. It's coming. So good things are coming your way. So I hope you enjoy that because I have been working on it. <laughs> I have no doubt. You're always working on something, 10 things. And I have no doubt it's going to be all kinds of awesome. Oh, thank you. I mean, the to-do list is never any shorter. If anything, <laughs> if I finish one task, I've already thought of 10 more things to do. So I need to update the Etsy because there's so many more stickers and bookmarks that I've had created. So Again, things are happening behind the scenes. I hopefully will keep you all up to date. But yes, <laughs> I want to make sure you guys have all the coziness in your corner. So I appreciate you guys. And I'm just so thankful that you take the time to read these books and chat about these books and join the live streams. I mean, you make everything so great. And 
yes, getting the compliments are amazing. But when you guys participate, it just blows my mind because I'm going, you guys are taking part in this thing I created. So I just, I appreciate you guys so much. So thank you for being a part of the book club. And I'm going to try and do some things coming up this month. So April is going to be a great month. we got giveaways and more content, cozy things happening. So, <laughs> oh, you guys are so cute. I'm missing all the comments. I'm going to have to go back for the giveaway and read them all, but I'm looking forward to doing that. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, you're so sweet. If so, <laughs> is there anything else you wanted to talk about before I start crying and being all emotional with happiness? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just ready to uh, see if my library app has uh, the book too. And if not, then I'll just buy it. I'm, so I saw someone said it's still $13.99 for Kindle. And so this is actually a Crooked Lane. And Crooked Lane, they don't really do the traditionally sized cozy mass like mass market so yes this one's the trade so it's larger but this one's hardcover so the books that I'm giving away retail for $26.99 uh, so these books are not cheap I know some people already put in the requests I really like the new system of having the TBR ready to go throughout the year because people have said they had to put in their library requests early and it helps mm -hmm. so hopefully the giveaway will also help I have not read this book, but I'm doing the giveaway of it. So I hope that you guys enjoy the book when you do read it for the book club. And fun fact, next month for the book club, I will actually be at Malice Domestic. So I'll be doing this live for cool. the Malice Domestic event. So <laughs> I'll be coming at you in the DC hotel room. That's so cool. I can't wait. So I'll, all sorts of good things are coming your way. And so I just wanted to say thank you again to Jeannie. She is a dream come true. Get it? I dream of Jeannie. Dream come true. So, <laughs> we're cozy mystery readers. We love our puns. <laughs> so we're going to have three giveaway winners tonight. So we're going to have the, one, the winner for Death Comes to Marlow and Death and Croissants. One winner is going to win cover art. And I'm going to figure out a way to do a brush with murder. What I'm probably going to do is I'll leave the YouTube comments as an option for the giveaway for probably another couple of days because I know not everyone can join live. So all of these comments are going to count and I'll leave the option for YouTube commenters as well. And then I'll probably give it a 48 hour cutoff period. And then this one will be a giveaway as well. So that's the plan for the first book for the giveaway, but there's still four more. So lots of good things are coming your way. <laughs> but thank you. And I want to make sure I always do this. I almost always forget because I make the images. <laughs> And then I forgot to share them. So we're making progress with our book club TBR. And next month it is A Brush with Murder. And so we have the official TBR right there. I'm currently working on making some of the thumbnails and the live stream links. So things are still happening behind the scenes. But if you ever think of a cozy mystery that you love five star reads, let me know anytime you read that book and I will add it to a future TBR potential Twitter poll to be voted on later. So that 2024 TBR has not happened yet but I will take requests if you have them. So <laughs> make sure you keep that in mind. If you read a five-star cozy, let me know and I'll add it to the list. So I wanted to make sure I mentioned that as well. <laughs> and now I'm losing my voice. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. I have one in mind. I'm going to shoot you. And uh... Oh yeah, go for it. I'm just, I'm so appreciative of you guys taking the time to read the cozy mystery. I'm so glad you guys enjoyed the book. That makes me so happy. And yes, eventually we have to do something pertaining to Scotland because this book makes me want to go live in Scotland even more than I already want to do. <laughs> mm -hmm. I want to just pick up and go to Scotland. And I want a little Wallace to come with me. But thank you for joining tonight. Thank you to Jeannie. And again, I mentioned her social media information earlier, but she is Jeannie Epstein uh, for her last name, Epstein. Jeannie Epst, E P S T for Twitter, and Jeannie writes for Instagram. And everything for me is at Cozy Mystery Club. I technically go by Writer A Heart for my own platforms, but for me, it's the Cozy Mystery Book Club at Cozy Mystery Club, Instagram and Twitter. So all sorts of coziness is coming your way for this month, next month, and of course, for the rest of 2023 and beyond. So thank you for joining tonight. And I hope you guys enjoy the rest of your evening. Maybe enjoy a raspberry scone. Mm. Keep me posted on that. I'm curious. <laughs> but thank you for joining and discussing this book tonight and being a part of the Cozy Mystery Book Club. So please stay happy, healthy, and cozy tonight. So please take care of yourselves, everyone. Have a nice one. Bye.